Welcome to Bronx Talk. Last week, the digital publication, The City, broke a story about the mayor's plans to locate a 34,000 seat temporary cricket stadium for the 2024 Cricket World Cup on the parade grounds in Van Cortlandt Park. This would involve the closing of a huge section of the 43 acre parkland from January through June of next year for construction, and then two more weeks for the tournament itself. As you can imagine, parks advocates and elected officials alike are raising eyebrows on the prospect of not only making the park unusable for a period of time, but also very large questions about getting 34,000 people to the park, into and out of the stadium, as well as simply finding a place to park literally thousands of cars. There are also significant environmental and legal concerns like constructing a sports stadium adjacent to the African burial ground, as well as restoration questions, and much more. One of the elected officials who expressed concerns to Mayor Adams about the proposal is with us tonight. He was on Bronx Talk recently, but he agreed to come back to the program because of the significance of tonight's subject matter. We welcome back to Bronx Talk, Assembly Member Jeffrey Dinowitz. Nice to see you, uh, Assembly Member. By the way, both of our guests are on Skype tonight. And also uh, back on Bronx Talk is the secretary of the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality. She's a fierce parks advocate. Always nice to see Karen Argenti. So nice to have both of you with us, uh, assembly member, and nice to see you. And uh, Ms. Argenti, nice to have you with us. Um, let's start with you, assembly member. Uh, you wrote a letter, you and two of your colleagues wrote a letter to uh, the mayor. Um, you didn't exactly say, don't do it but you laid out some considerations. So just briefly um, explain why you positioned it that way. And then also, of course, through the program, we'll break down some of the considerations. Sure. Um, Councilman Eric Dinowitz, Congress member Richie Torres, and I wrote a letter to the mayor and first said, you know, we really appreciate that you're trying to bring a big event to the Bronx, that you recognize that Van Cortlandt Park is a great place, but we raised some very serious concerns, concerns which I think make it virtually impossible uh, for this event to actually happen. We talked about legal issues such as the requirement to uh, go to the legislature to alienate parkland, the requirement for a EULA, the requirement for an EIS, those are the legal issues. Uh, but th the basic issue is we have fought for years now to protect Van Cortlandt Park, to keep it a park. And I don't want to see the land in Van Cortlandt Park treated as if it was an empty lot or you know abandoned property. It's parkland and it's the most beautiful park in the city. And the idea of building a 34,000 seat stadium uh, in that location, uh, and it's not just the 34,000, it's the issues which uh, which you outlined. It's you know getting the people there, it's a lot of people, where they're gonna park, how they're gonna get there. Um, the, the fact that it is a directly adjacent to the enslaved African burial ground, um, and the fact that there could be lasting damage to the park, and uh, up until now we have seen no guarantee that the park would be restored uh, or that any improvements will be made to the park. But beyond that, it, I think it'll take the park offline for more than six months. If it'll take six months to build the stadium uh, and run the matches, why would it take just a, a day or two to uh, unbuild the stadium? It'll take months. I think for the better part of a year, the, the public 
won't have access to the parade ground, including people who play cricket. Uh, let's bring Ms. Argenti into the conversation. Um, both of you, and, and maybe you know that I looked it up, and both of you were on our program together. Um, you have been on, both of you have been on individually or with other people, but together you were on the program uh, in October of 1998. It is hard for me not to notice that. And that was because uh, the city uh, was proposing uh, to build the water filtration plant at the Jerome Park Reservoir, which ultimately they did put in Van Cortlandt Park, which both of you opposed uh, all along the way, and it did get built. Uh, so, Ms. Argenti, is, is this the same story 25 years later, or is there kind of a difference in, uh, I mean, one is a, a supposedly a temporary stadium, and the other, of course, is the permanent uh, filtration plant? Well, actually, it's exactly the same because the alienation was a temporary alienation because as you remember they were putting it underground and so it was they were the temporary alienation was only for the construction part but they they did alienate it we did get replacement or substitution parkland for the land that they were going to use and that's the only difference is i don't see that on the table anywhere so just to remind everybody, we did get $220 million worth of park, new parkland in the Bronx in return for the Croton Water Treatment Plant. So are you uh, suggesting that if they would have come up with some kind of uh, payment like that, I remember the assemblyman called it a bribe of some of his colleagues because they said, hey, we'll fix your park in another neighborhood. Um, would that make it a, an acceptable proposal for you? Or are you just saying, look, Th this one doesn't even c come close <laughs> to what they had done there. The only thing that would make it acceptable to me is if they went through the process, the process that examines, you know, alienation, examines what the impacts are, examines where the cars are going to go, who's going to take care of the traffic, who's going to take care of cleaning out the porta potties. All those things are un questions that are unanswered. I don't even know if anybody asked them. Uh, you know, you mentioned porta potties. How, how many porta potties do you need for 34,000 people? It seems to me, I mean, you know, City Field holds 42,000 people. I realize the baseball field is probably bigger than a, a cricket pitch, but um, uh, that's still a lot of people. I, I, I'd be shocked if you're going to put up thousands of, of porta potties. I mean, you're, are you going to need a sewer system? And well, the, those porta potties are not on, you're not on that picture that you showed. So that means there would be a, a further uh, areas uh, that you would be, um, uh, that would have to be either alienated or at least used for it. Assemblyman, um, let's talk about the alienation process. You, you understand that very, very well. Um, a, a, um, one of the lawyers, his name is uh, Christopher Rizzo, sent me some materials about the notion of alienation and said, this falls right under the description of what needs to be alienated before you build it. So just for the general public, explain what alienation is and why you presumably think that this uh, process needs that sort of legislation. Well, in New York State, parkland is precious. It's sacrosanct. You can't just build on parkland. You have to be able to get legislative approval to bill to, uh, to, to pay for the cost of that by providing other parkland, for example. Uh, the point being that there's a process. And whether this stadium is temporary or whether it's permanent, it doesn't matter as far as I understand the law. Uh, there would have to be an effort made to go to the Assembly and the Senate uh, to get uh, what's called park alienation legislation passed. And that, that involves two things which are, are both remote. One is that it would have to happen soon, but the legislature is not scheduled to be in session until January. And two, tr typically the legislation would have to be sponsored by the local assemblyman and the local state senator. And I'm the local assemblyman, and I have no plans on sponsoring such legislation. Uh, you know, we should mention that the proposal came uh, to the city from the International Cricket Council, the ICC. And um, can, Assemblymember, can we assume that they don't really 
uh, fully, I mean, in other words, I can understand their enthusiasm and build it in New York City. Then Cortland Park is a place where there are cricket players. Uh, can we assume that they are, might be unfamiliar with this process? Of course, we assume the mayor would know and, and City Hall would know. Um, but, but, you know, where are they in this? Um, do you think they just said, well, this would be a good idea and are proposing it and without being aware of some of these things? I'm not clear on who proposed the idea of putting it in the park, whether it's the, the administration or whether it's uh, the organizers of this event from another continent. Uh, but and I, I would certainly hope that the administration would know that there's a process that has to be followed. And as I said at the beginning, I, I, I think they're trying to do something good. They're trying to bring a big event to the Bronx. But, you know, there are other places in the Bronx. There's Yankee Stadium, for example, which, by the way, has plenty of parking. Um, there is there's the a parking lot at Orchard Beach. The mayor thought that the parking lot at Orchard Beach was good enough to house uh, asylum seekers. I assume it's large enough. In fact, I'm positive it's large enough to this event. Uh, you know, is it suitable there? I'm not pushing it to go there. I imagine it is suitable there. So there are other choices. I'm not against doing this in the Bronx. I just think we have to always remember that we have to protect our parks, particularly Van Cortland Park, uh, because it was the victim of that horrible, horrible event 20 years ago, which uh, let, gave us the filtration plan. Ms. Argenti, you have been a, a somewhat of an expert uh, and, and the folks at BCEQ, somewhat of an expert on things like CICRA, uh, which is um, the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, does that apply? Would they have to do that kind of environmental study in preparation to even get there? And is it possible to do that between now and presumably January 1st, where they'd want to start uh, building this thing? Yeah, I think that it's very clear that 34,000 people a couple of times a day you know, they might end up with 90,000 people coming in eventually. They certainly can sell tickets to 90,000 people. That um, the amount of water that they will use um, is going to be of a, such a nature that it will be uh, start off the environmental review. The traffic problems, which are going to be uncontrollable, will also be um, a trigger. And so um, it's they haven't answered any of the questions of how things are getting in, how the sanitation is going to be taken care of. You know, um, I remember once that there was a problem at the bridge and it just closed all the traffic on Broadway, on, on Van Cortland Park South. I mean, it just it, it boomerang. There was no movement at all. So what I heard, um, and just, you know, I've done some background work on this, uh, is that they would find a parking lot somewhere else, whether it be at Yankee Stadium or it would be, um, you know, I don't, I don't know where else that could be, maybe up in Westchester. I mean, I, I don't really know. And uh, somebody even suggested that ultimately they're going to pave over the whole parade grounds and put the parking lot there. Uh, if, if they don't do something like that, I mean, what are you going to bust? Are you going to put all the people on the number one train and get them off at 242nd Street or fill up the Henry Hudson Parkway? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just not fully understanding how this would work. I'm uh, assuming, um, Karen Argenti, that you agree, right? I, I, I can't, yeah, I'm I, trying to figure out how, how it could be done, I'm much like the assemblyman and his colleagues, but I, I, I'm not figuring that out. The only out. reason why this is at all a project is it's free. It's not free in, in Yankee Stadium. They're going to charge them. It wouldn't be free at Randall's Island, which also is appropriate. They are going to charge them. It's, it's, not, it's free here. So it's a free, it's like the park is for free. And that violates everything that everybody knows about the public trust and how parkland is special. It's not just city owned land, it's special. And, and in New York state, there's no net loss of parkland. Uh, the, um, uh, let's see, it was a proposed a little while back, Governor's Ball, to put Governor's Ball in um, Van Cortland Park. At that time, the Parks Department turned down 
uh, the opportunity to bring the governor's ball in uh, because they said there were 50,000 people in three days and that was uh, too many people. Well, here you're talking about two weeks of 34,000 people. Uh, I mean, I, do you think, uh, I, I don't know, from a structural point, we'll ask each of you, start with you, Ms. Argenti. Um, uh, do you think the Parks Department has changed or, or all of a sudden they didn't realize that they said no then and now it's okay to, to do it? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of yeah, not following what's going on here. It, it seems like it's a little bit of favoritism here that, I, I mean, I can't really tell either, um, but it, it's clear that the Parks Department has a policy on their webpage. It says there's, these are the parks that you can have over 5,000 people and Van Cortlandt Park is not on that list. Hmm. It's not there. So um, it, it seems like some people get to use the park and some people don't. Uh, I don't know. What Assemblyman, your thought about now you've been an assembly member for a while. You uh, know that they had tried to um, uh, put governor's ball and um, I'm, I'm assuming you were against it at that time also is inappropriate. That would have been a disaster. I mean, the, 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 it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. But, you know, the logistics really matter. Recently, we asked the Parks Department to assign a few PEP officers to then quote the park because there have been ongoing issues. There's the, there's the huge loud parties and the Chandler Recreation Area. There's litter problems. And they turned us down for a, a few PEP officers. They can't resolve the Chandler issue. So if they can't resolve these relatively small issues, why would we think that they're in a position uh, to deal with 34,000 people and the traffic, you know, and even if only 10% of those people drive 3,400 cars, 3,400 cars coming into the neighborhood, that is madness. And, you know, you showed the um, the rendering earlier, but let's just look at, uh, take this in context. The ball field at Yankee Stadium is three and a half acres, and Yankee Stadium itself is 11.6 acres. The parade ground is 43 acres. And this proposal is going to take up nearly 20 acres, which is not quite twice as much as the size of Yankee Stadium. It's going to be massive in terms of the stadium and everything else that goes with it. So this is not some little thing tucked away in the corner of the parade ground. This is huge. People who, schools that have track meets, the, the Philharmonic concert, people who play cricket or baseball, nobody would have use of that those parade grounds for a long time and i'm not sure how the parks department and the city can really overcome that i i um have been talking as i said i've been talking to a lot of people and the question came up about the restoration of it and you and your colleagues put that in your letter i know we, we excerpted a uh, quote from uh, the letter um and you said we are extremely concerned about significant negative physical impacts on van Cortland park and the surrounding area the likely damage to the parade ground and its underlying infrastructure and the impossibility of ensuring a full restoration and upgrading is concerning. The close proximity to the enslaved African burial ground coupled with the potential damage it may endure is undeniably disheartening. Uh, we'll let you both uh, answer this. We'll start with you, Assemblyman. What about the restoration? Somebody um, suggested to me that because the whole thing is being sponsored by a, a an organization, uh, the International Cricket Council that's in Dubai, that when uh, when the thing is over, they're going to say bye bye, and then you're going to have to chase them uh, to to actually do the restoration. Is that an exaggeration, or is that uh, something that's of concern to you? You know what? Based on our experience, based upon history, based upon promises that were made and not kept, based upon statements that were made during the whole filtration plant battle, I don't take anything for granted. You know, as they say, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. If somebody wanted to do major work to upgrade Van Cortland Park, the time to have done it was before, not after. Because once this event is over, there's just no guarantee. And while I'm not doubting anybody's uh, good intentions from the administration, I just don't see so far how this has been properly thought through. Uh, Ms. Argenti, um, uh, same question for you about restoration. And uh, did you learn a lesson from uh, the previous construction uh, in the, uh, Marshall, the former Marshall Golf Course over there? Uh, because yeah. apparently they're still working to, and we're 20 years after that was built, they're still working to figure out how to put together the golf house. Yes, it's still, it's still not, nothing's happening there. They, 
They have no idea when it's going to be finished. They don't even know what they're supposed to be doing. It's just an incredible debacle. So you, you think if we were to go in this direction um, th that we're going to have a problem again? I had heard that it was going to take a year or two to resod the turf. That You know, you can't just plant grass over 43 acres and have it just, you know, sprout up in a moment. Uh, no matter what, no matter what Miracle Grow says to you, um, it, 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 is it possible to do this and have it restored um, acceptably in your mind? I don't see how they possibly could do it, um, and um, and and also like it, it, they they still have to get they still have to find a way to replace the parkland during the period that people are not using that parkland. And so I don't know how they can. Could you that. just explain? You you mentioned it earlier. Um, explain to me about and and to our viewers, of course, about the replacement of the parkland and how it might or might not have been done. Uh, you know, back uh, in 2004 when uh, they constructed the filtration plant. So it was done when, during the construction plant, and that was that they decided to put $220 million into the budget of the Parks Department to build new parkland or fix up old parkland that was water-related or something like that, mm -hmm. um, and a whole bunch of other things including uh, they did some some work on uh, um, expense budget items like forestry and things like that that was listed that was part of what what the deal was we don't know what this deal is we don't know where this money's going it's going into the general fund it's not even going into the park so whatever money they are going to pay as a fee or for the permit or whatever is required for all these things that they have to do that money has nothing to do with the park, which means once they leave, what what base upon what basis do we have any strength? And even worse than that, what if they decide they like it and they want to keep it? Hmm. Then what happens? Um, Assembly member, the um, process aside from the alienation, which would go through the state. If uh, presuming that it is uh, necessary, um, as I understand it, it will go through uh, the city council. Um, do you have a sense? Uh, it might be early, and, and maybe um, uh, some uh, council member Dinowitz could provide more on that. But do you have a sense if because it'll go through there, and then it'll go to the land use committee and all those kinds of things? Uh, do you have a sense if? Um, uh, Bronx to start with Bronx uh, council members uh, would be for it or would understand what uh, at least uh, both of you are um, concerned about? Well, I, obviously I cannot speak for our councilman or any other council member, um, but I can say this. They're going to try to sell this as bringing economic benefits, uh, you know, biz small businesses, jobs, things like that. They're kind of the same type of stuff they did 20 years ago, stuff that never really came about. And let, let's say it did bring some extra business. It, it's, it's a two week period, it's a very brief period. And most people going uh, to, uh, to these matches, they're not gonna be traveling all over the Bronx, spending money everywhere. That's just how it's gonna be. I mean, let's be realistic about it. So I believe any potential uptick in economic activity would be very, very minor and uh, if people are sold, uh, if they sell it to people on that basis, I think people may not be thinking people, it through. May, well, of course, um, you know, as uh, Ms. Argenti mentioned, um, you know, they, they, at least as far as we know, they're not going to distribute uh, park improvement money uh, all over the city or all over the Bronx. Um, I, I want to just uh, talk about something else that the three of us know about because we lived through the history of the uh, development of that water filtration plant. They talked about construction jobs. And I remember that the issue was, let's get those jobs, certainly for Bronx people. We'd love Bronx people to get those jobs. So they set up an apprentice program, but that took a, a while to set it up. I believe it was at Bronx Community College. It took a little while to set up. And then when we would get the jobs report, you know, the construction jobs, I think it was like 12% or 18% of the, the workers were Bronx people. And the rest, uh, you know, listen, we're, we were all for economic development, but it didn't benefit 
uh, the borough of the Bronx. Um, so I, I'm, am I on target with that, uh, remembering it in that way? Uh, Ms. Argenta, you're shaking your head, yes. yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and they were supposed to increase the unemployment rate in the Bronx, and that never happened either. I mean, decreased the unemployment rate. Right. And it didn't. It didn't work. It was just it didn't. It, and and the local people along Jerome Avenue, there was no uptick in what they saw. Mm -hmm. But in Broadway, it's a it's a it's a much more cl uh, clustered. They're going to be wiped out. There's no way that they're going to be able to exist with thirty four thousand people. I mean, you all know. Wait, what wait, it's wait. Like. Explain explain what you mean it because they, if you bring thirty four thousand, you can hardly walk across the street. When it goes out, everything is like people are all over the place. I mean, it's just I can't even tell you how many cops they have to have there just for a little concert. Well, that's that's true. The assembly member uh, brought that up earlier. But um, explain to me if there are thirty four thousand people, some people will walk around. They'd love to go to Lloyd's Carrot Cake, uh, you know, which is across the street. And there'll be a big line there and she won't be able to, they won't be able to <laughs> be understand that it'll be so much. Like, right. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get for last remarks. Uh, Ms. Argenti, what, what happens now? The city seems to want to do it. Um, I'm sure there, there's work behind the scenes. Uh, you had um, mentioned to me that um, BCEQ is uh, looking at uh, legal support. Um, yes. do, do you see that if they say, yes, we're going to do this, you, you, you would take them to court? Is that, is that what's next for as you? Far, as far as we know now, there has been no application from the city. When the city takes an action, we will um, see. We have hired, retained a, an attorney, and we will be in court. Mm -hmm. uh, asse assembly member, you know, maybe we presume too much. The proposal is here, uh, as we understand, the ICC um, wants it in the United States and is considering other cities. Uh, would you be satisfied if they said, well, we'll build it somewhere else? Or would you like to see um, Mayor Adams and you and others say, hey, this may be a better place for it in New York City? I think it would be terrific if this event were held in an appropriate place in the Bronx. Uh, Van Cortlandt Park does seem to be logistically impossible for them to do it. But as I mentioned earlier, Orchard Beach, Yankee Stadium, Karen mentioned Randall's Island. There are places to do this where we won't be destroying part of a park. You know, let's just uh, for a moment, just uh, because I hadn't thought of Yankee Stadium. Of course, there's City Field is another place in, in New York City. Um, what what would it take to do that? It seems to me we they run soccer uh, matches there. They do high school games there. You know, they run high school. I mean, all kinds of things go on there. Why wouldn't we want Yankee Stadium? I mean, it, and, and don't forget, they Yankees would not come back and build the stadium until they got a guarantee from the city for ten thousand parking spots got and it. the Metro North Station. So they are equipped to handle. That kind Something of a like that. Listen, we uh, we got to run, but uh, Assembly Member, um, thank you so much for your um, participation. I know we uh, kind of put this together at the last minute, and um, uh, obviously we'll all have our ears to the ground and find out what's going on. Uh, we should mention this is being uh, videotaped on Thursday, um, uh, which um, what is it, the twentieth? And there is a community board meeting tonight. The community board also has expressed opposition. So anyway, we got to run. Thank you, Karen Argenti. Thank you, Assemblymember Jeff Dinowitz. Thanks to our producer, Rebecca you, Hemick, uh, Nick Marrero, the cast of thousands who are with us in the studio. If the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, we'll see you next week.